Welcome to Deep Crawl. Today we're going to go through a typical Deep Crawl report. Once a crawl is finalised, Deep Crawl will present an overview of that data in this dashboard. The first thing that catches the eye is the pie chart summary here under the pages breakdown. As you can see, just over 89,000 URLs have been crawled in this instance. The pie chart essentially shows you the makeup of your site and as you hover over each category, you can see a slightly more detailed overview of the data. The aim of the pie chart is to give you a snapshot of your crawl efficiency, but it should be stressed that data should be fully analysed before making any changes to your site. Each of these categories are clickable, so for example, if you wanted to investigate your duplicate pages, you can click on that link and it will take you into the duplicate pages report. To the left of the pie chart, we show any change data between this crawl and the previous or any other specified crawl. As you can see, there have been 81 changes in total since the previous crawl. If you'd like to see all of the changes that have occurred, you can hit the See All Changes button here. This is a really important feature of Deepcrawl as it saves you manually comparing data sets in Excel and saves you a lot of time. Just above this you can see on what date this crawl was run and which crawl it is being compared to. You can even see which, if any settings, have been changed between the two crawls. Below we have the issues list. This list shows you the main issues that we have found at the time of the crawl. This is usually a great place to start your audit. Going back over to the right hand side of the screen, we can see the split between pages on HTTP or HTTPS protocols. And beneath this, we have a bar graph for uncrawled URLs. These are any URLs that have not been crawled by Deepcrawl, perhaps because of the limitations set in the setup of the crawl, the URLs being found in the robots file, or perhaps the URLs were malformed. Going further down the page, we have the crawl gap analysis and orphan pages bar graphs. Both of these graphs help you identify any gaps in your website. The crawl source gap analysis helps you to identify any gaps between the website, sitemaps or Google Analytics data when integrated. The orphan pages bar graph shows you any pages that aren't found internally linked within the website. These URLs may have been found in the sitemaps or pulled through from your Google Analytics data. The next graph below is the web crawl depth. This gives you a really nice visualisation of your site's architecture. It reveals the distribution of content on your site using the data found in this crawl. On the horizontal axis we have the levels or depth of the site. Level 1 is your base domain or starting point and each level represents one click a user will have to make to reach that content. On the vertical axis we have the number of URLs. This will give you a good insight into your user experience journey as well as how easy it is for search engines to find your content. You can hover over certain levels to see the exact number of URLs found in certain categories. If you only want to look at your failed URLs for example, you can toggle through the different categories using the legend just beneath the graph, like so. Moving on to the final graph below, we show you the pages breakdown trend. Each point on the graph represents a crawl that's been run. This is very useful for building up a historical view and allows you to easily spot changes. It may allow you to spot an unusual spike in duplicate pages or non-indexable pages that you weren't expecting, from which you can then quickly identify and investigate. Going back to the top of the report, you can check out any previous crawls, monitor and manage any tasks that have been set, or share the report which allows you to share read-only access for a set period of time ranging from 24 hours to 6 months with colleagues, developers or clients. You can do this by hitting the copy link button which will automatically copy this link into your clipboard or you can send an email directly to that person or the entire team. You may have noticed the download buttons dotted around in the top right hand corner of each graph. Deepcrawl allows you to export individual graphs. This is particularly handy if you are creating a presentation deck or perhaps some customised reports. You can also take the raw data into a CSV file. Heading over to the left nav we have a full list of all of the various reports that you can dive deeper into. First of all we have the main headings. As you hover over each of these headings, tooltips will appear showing you the number of reports within this area and the number of reports affected by change and or issues. If you click on a specific icon, for example the change button, Deepcrawl will automatically filter out all other reports and only show you the reports within this heading that are affected by change. 
Within this report, we have the name of the individual report, the trend that we've seen occurring, the total number of URLs, the total change since the last crawl, how many URLs have been added. These are URLs that are brand new since the previous crawl, pages that have been removed, so these are pages that have been found elsewhere within the report, but are no longer within this specific report, and missing URLs. These are URLs that aren't found in this report or any other report in the audit. As you can see, Deepcrawl provides a comprehensive look into the technical SEO performance of your site with over 150 different reports to go through. One of the ways we've made this more manageable is by separating all of these reports into various different headings. Indexation looks at the foundation of your website and its indexability. Content goes into what is actually contained within your web pages, so looking at the on-page SEO. Config shows you how well or poorly your site is configured from pagination to HTTPS to mobile configuration. Validation gives you an overview of different resources on your site, your performance in terms of load time and anything related to redirects. Links is assessing your linking structure and gives you a list of reports for both internal and external links. Sources gives you a breakdown of where all of the data is coming from, from the web crawl, sitemaps, Google Analytics, or backlinks. Extraction data will only be applicable if you've set up any custom extractions in the setup of the crawl. And finally, all reports show you every single report that is contained within the audit. Deepcrawl has a variety of reports covering everything from redirects to duplicates to broken pages and from HTTPS resources on HTTP pages to mobile configuration and hreflang combinations, broken JavaScript or CSS and everything else in between. One of the easiest ways to look into what matters to you most is by using the search functionality at the top of the left nav. Here you can search for everything related to what you're interested in. Let's say you were looking at anything that was broken on your site. Here, Deepcrawl automatically finds what you're looking for in a much easier way. So let's take a look at these broken pages or 404s. When you click on the report, you're presented with a list view of URLs that are returning a 404 status code. The list is automatically filtered by DeepRank. DeepRank is an internal link authority indicator that uses an algorithm to calculate the authority of your internal link weight, similar to that of Google's PageRank. The scale ranges from 0 to 10, 0 being the least authoritative and 10 being the most authoritative. This is a fantastic metric to help you identify your most important pages, particularly handy when dealing with a large number of URLs. DeepRank becomes a lot more insightful when the report is integrated with Google Analytics. Note that you can change the layout of the way the data is provided by using the change layout icon in the top right hand corner. You can also check out the previous version of this report by using this drop down here or download the data to a CSV file. Deepcrawl also has a whole host of filtration capabilities in 2.0. In this instance, I may want to filter my pages by DeepRank. I can then add an additional filter to the number of links pointing into these pages. Deepcrawl then quickly sifts through the data to find the relevant pages to your filters. From here, you can also create tasks and track whether issues have been fixed over time, acting as an internal ticketing system. To do this, you hit create new task, add in a title and description, set a priority for this particular task, and then assign it to the relevant people or team. You can then set a deadline, save this task, and then the task notifier will be updated. Digging deeper into the report, by clicking on the link, you navigate to a highly detailed page overview, which every URL throughout the audit will have. Across the top of the screen, we have the status code of this URL, its indexability, if it's a unique or a duplicated page, the level in the crawl the page has been found, and the deep rank. As you can see, there is a lot of data and detail at this level. You can click through various different links on the left, or sift through the data on the right. You can even expand more details on headings, canonicals, or social media open graph tags and Twitter cards in the center of the screen. In this instance, we're clearly looking for any broken links. So we'll head over to Unique Links In. And as you can see, there is one unique link in. Deepcrawl defines a unique link by combination of anchor text and a particular URL. 
In this case, there are 666 instances of this particular anchor text and link combination across the site. In order to discover where this broken link is coming from, we must head to the URL from. In this case, it's this URL here. In order to find where this link is within the HTML, we can of course open up the page and view the page source. Deepcrawl's removed a few steps here, so if you click view in source, it takes you to the exact line of code in the HTML where this link is found. In this instance, it's 453. That pretty much wrapped up an overview of how to navigate through a Deepcrawl report. There is plenty more actionable data for you to dive into and explore, so if you'd be interested in having a more detailed demonstration, please do not hesitate to contact the Deepcrawl team. Thanks for watching.